Pleasant day to all. Welcome to PEC5, technology for teaching and learning one. I am Daniel Corpus and for today we will have another fruitful discussion under chapter 8 of visual media. As for the scope of my topic, I will be discussing the categories of visuals, the basic elements of designing visuals. At the end of this video presentation, we will be able to recognize the categories of different visuals of visual media and appreciate some of the basic elements in designing visuals. And last is to adopt the basic elements of designing visuals that modifies our instructions to meet the needs of our learners. So much for that, let me give you the objectives of this presentation. We will define what is visual media, what are the categories of visuals, and three is what are the basic elements of designing visuals and last is my personal insight now without further ado let's learn about visual media what is visual media according to media and information literacy of 2021 visual media are sources of information in the form of visual representations this can be instructions analogs rough illustrations or digital reproductions of an object. There should be an interpretation of the data and sources, may be hosted on the internet, printed in publications, displayed through broadcast media, and otherwise disseminated. So in other words, as for my understanding, visual media are type of data contents that is being presented as representation, symbols, objects, and etc that mainly helps us to grasp a concepts and identifies ideas being explained and introduced. Now, let's proceed to the categories of visuals. What are the categories of visuals? Number one on the list is the representational visuals. Representational visuals are the most common visual scene in training modules. As the name suggests, representational visuals are intended to depict the actual appearance of content. So to be specific, representational visuals are appropriately used to present concrete concepts and factual information related to job tasks. They can be real photographs of any concept or screenshots of a software being taught. So as an example, this picture represent the modern technology and for instance it's a type of representational visuals showing what was the concepts of modern technology number two is mnemonic visuals it is strategic patterns that help all learners recall details facts or concepts that are taught in a lesson what you are seeing right now is an example of a mnemonic about the planets of a solar system Another example is a mnemonic for coordinating conjunctions like fanboys. We as a teacher can create mnemonics, visuals, in order for our students to easily remember what is being taught. Three is organizational visuals. Organizational visuals helps your learners to understand the order of the cause, to establish qualitative relationships, among the key concepts of the course. And to be specific, this type of visuals is the process of using charts or drawings to deliver data or to make a statement in a way that is organized and perceptible. Take a look at this example. It's an organizational visuals about Benjamin Bloom's taxonomy of educational objectives. Number four is relational visuals. Relational visuals establish quantitative relationships. Some common examples include bar graphs and pie charts. Instead of dumping paragraphs filled with numbers and percentages to show factual information, relational visuals can be effectively used to present the same in a clear and precise manner. Number five is transformational visuals. Transformational visuals graphics are used to depict the movement or changes over time and are often used in combination with representational visuals to illustrate procedures and processes. 
and other words, transformational visuals encompasses the type of learning visuals that depicts process, motions, or transformations. Take a look from this example. It's a transformational visuals that presents the life cycle of a butterfly. Number six is interpretive visuals. Interpretive visuals illustrate a principle, jury, or cause-effect relationships, as according to Clark and Lyons, 2011. As an additional, interpretive visuals help our learners understand processes or events that are usually invisible or abstract. Have a look at this example, an interpretive visuals that depicts the food chain. Now let's move forward to the basic elements of designing visuals. One is line. Line is the foundation of any visuals. It is the first and most versatile of the visual elements of art. As for my perspective, line is an important element in designing our visuals because it can be used to suggest shape, pattern, form, structure, grot, depth, distance, rhythm, movement, and a range of emotions. Number two is shape. Shape can be natural or man-made, regular or irregular, flat 2D dimensional or solid, 3D dimensional, representational or abstract, geometric or organic, transparent or opaque. In my own perspective, shape is an important element in designing our visuals because it will lead to a design that resonates with our target audience while inspiring trust and confidence. Shapes will influence how our viewers or learners perceive and react. Number three is tone. Tone is the lightness or darkness of a color. The tonal values of our visual designs can be adjusted or alter its expressive character. With my perspective, tone as in another basic element of um, designing visuals is important because with tone, we can be used to represent things, objects, people, or places in descriptive or symbolic ways using lighter or darker tones that enhance the vibe of our presentations. Number four is the color. Color is the visual element that has the strongest effect on our emotions. Well, for me, we use color to create the mood or atmosphere of an art. Same with our presentations. Number five is the pattern. Pattern is made by repeating or echoing the elements of an artwork to communicate a sense of balance, harmony, contrast, rhythm, or movement. In other words, pattern actually makes our visual designs more uniform and appealing as it possesses a static value and sense of balance. Number six is texture. Texture is the surface quality of an artwork, the roughness or smoothness of the material from which it is made. We experience texture in two ways, optically through sight and physically through touch. Well, from my perspective, texture as a basic element of design also added an overall look of our visual designs that is aesthetically pleasing Beyond what we see or what we perceive, it emanates and resonates our aptitudes. And for our last elements is the form. Form is the physical volume of a shape and the space that it occupies. As an elaboration, knowing how to use forms effectively in designing our visuals will determine how well we can convey a message or information to our learners. Conclusively, I can say that there is a need for us to understand visual media and information that incorporates its categories and elements 
because basically we are all visual learners therefore in order for us to learn better visual media should be used effectively we as a teachers should also teach our students how to use visual media responsibly not only for entertainment but to use it productively also attention span is very affected by visuals thus we as teachers should adjust our teaching methods to cope with the kind of learners we have today that's why for our teaching visuals is significant as well as knowing its categories and basic elements of how we designed and assess the learning process that can greatly impact our way of giving instructions and better enhance the process of our teaching styles method or pedagogy that would be all thank you for watching and i hope you'll learn something